This video discusses kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the ability for one object to do work based on its speed. So the faster it's going, the more kinetic energy it will have. If it has no speed, if it's at rest, it has no kinetic energy. And when we say it's doing work, that means it can use this energy to change either the position or speed of another object. And we'll talk about this a little later. The units for kinetic energy, just like every type of energy we talk about, are joules, named after this guy, James Prescott Joule, a uh, brewer by trade, physicist by, uh, I guess, hobby is the best way to put it. Um, and the value of kinetic energy depends on two things, the mass and the speed of an object. Now to demonstrate that, I made a quick little simulation here, two bowling balls. The top one and the bottom one are both five kilograms. The top one, though, is going to go at eight meters per second, the bottom one at four meters per second. So when I start the simulation, you'll see that the top one hits first, naturally, since it's going faster. But it also pushes the bowling pin much, much further. Now, if we reset it and take a look at two different balls. Now the top ball here has five kilograms of mass. The bottom ball is only 2.5. So we'll expect that the bottom ball does not do as much work as the top ball does. So when they hit... Uh, now in this case the top ball does about twice as much work as the bottom ball which we expect because it has twice as much mass now to go and talk about doing a problem with kinetic energy so for this part we have a f-22 raptor fighter plane which has a mass of 29,300 kilograms and can reach a top speed of 612 meters per second. If we want to find the Ke, the first thing that we always do is write down what we know. So we know the mass and we know the velocity. And then we write down the formula that gives me what I know, what I want to know, and this one we already know. We can just plug in chug. Um, so we plug everything in and then solve for 612 squared, we get this. And then you should end up with 5.49 times 10 to the ninth joules as your answer. And that makes sense. It's a very large plane going very fast. It should have a lot of joules. It should have 5 billion joules of kinetic energy. A joule is not a lot of energy. If we find, wanted to do a harder problem, so say finding the velocity of a 49 kilogram deer with 1700 joules of kinetic energy, we're going to do it much the same way. We write down what we know and then we write down our formula. So in this case, we have one half mv squared and we want to solve it for velocity in this case so we want to get that v by itself okay things aren't cooperating so we'll make our own v real quick okay so, to get the one half on the other side, we're going to want to multiply everything by two. So instead of having one half, I want to get rid of that and multiply both sides by two. So when I do that, I'm basically saying I get a two over two, and I'm left with two ke is equal to mv squared. To get the m on the other side, since we're multiplying these two together, we want to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by m, and I'm left with v squared, which 
is still a problem. To get rid of the v squared, we got to take a square root. So we end up with the velocity is equal to the square root of 2ke over m. We plug in our values, and we end up with a velocity of 8.3 meters per second. That's a that's a pretty standard velocity. I'd believe that for a deer running through the woods. Um, now let's say the deer jumps. Just sidebar here. If the deer jumps, well. Some of its energy is going to be potential, but if it jumps kind of horizontally like this, even at its highest point, not all of its energy is going to be potential. It's always going to have some kinetic energy as it's moving forward. If the deer jumps straight up, I'm not so sure a deer can do that, but if it did, then at the top all its energy would become potential energy. But as it leaps forward, you know, right in front of your car, it's going to have some kinetic energy at every point, even at its highest point. And then going on to one final problem, if we wanted to find the mass of a coyote that has a speed of 5 meters per second and a kinetic energy of 312.5 joules, once again, we write down what we know. We write down our equation, which probably also isn't going to work for me. So we know our equation is v squared, but this time we're solving for m. So things are going to be a whole lot easier. So the 1 half is going to go away because we multiplied both sides by 2. So we get 2ke is equal to mv squared. And then to get the v squared on the other side, we have to divide by that. So we get 2ke over v squared is equal to m. Then we can plug it in down here. m is equal to 2 times 312.5 divided by 5 squared. Simplifying the math a little bit, we get 625 over 25 and a mass of 25 kilograms. So there we go. That's kinetic energy and three different kinetic energy problems that you could have.